What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Soma Blind. In the last episode, we got the Ark moving um, on its path to Phi, I believe, and we made our way to Site Alpha. And we're about to head in and explore, as we saw, well, it seems the WoW is quite the presence here. And I will say, I'm a little bit rusty, it's been a minute since I last played the game, so bear with me as I get more comfortable with uh, the controls again and everything. Or if I'm a little bit fuzzy with the story, but... Oh my goodness. What is that menacing sound? Did you guys hear that? That is some spooky stuff. Okay, so that... I mean, that is a door to Phi, right? That was Phi on the door. Alright, so we'll raise that door and head on down. I'm trying to remember all the different controls. How was it that we, um... I remember there was like a... Wow, this, this music is so scary! How was it that we, like, tilt over? That's how it was. It was with R1, right? Okay. Let's see. I guess we'll go in here too, right? Not like there's anything else to do. Yikes. Got all this stuff just floating around in here. <clears throat> I guess, ideally, we really just need to make our way through here, right? I don't, it's not like we're looking for something specific, we're really just trying to make it out. Right? We know that the Ark is on its way, and we're just trying to do the same. Naturally, there's going to be something, I'm sure, that prevents us from doing so smoothly. But, there's only one way to find out, right? Oh, that light's too bright. There's no way it's staying with us for very long. This reminds me of that maze from the the lower levels of what was it? Was it Tau? I don't think it was Tau. It was way earlier in the game, right? Is there really nothing here with us right now? Dang, man, this atmosphere has me super on edge, and there might not even be a threat near me. <laughs> That's almost comical. But I mean, hey, that's that's the art of horror, right? What is this? Is this something I can interact with? No. Okay. That's right, I do have a flashlight. I can help out with visibility a little bit. We're so close. Just tell me what you want. I need you to stop the world. What? How? The enslaved protein sloshing around your suit. Is the new what? What are you talking about? As soon as I came to Polycron, I tried to tell them to make the toxin that would make the world with them. But they didn't understand. They put it inside the cabinet. They needed to take it to Alpha, the fountainhead of the misery we created. And then the girl, she figured it out. She was going to take care of it, but the wow shrieked. They all died. You, you, you took the gel from the cabinet and made yourself into a venomous snake. You're saying this toxin inside of me can kill the wow altogether? You. Whoa. So that's pretty intense. So apparently there was a bit... We're going to bait the WoW into eating us, taking us over, trying to fuse with us, whatever it might be, and then getting it to eat this sort of poison that's been created that'll cause it to die somehow. 
trying to remember who who is this voice exactly. Right? Some collective consciousness of the people who unintentionally uh, allowed WoW to run amok. But either way, we're getting close. Although the way that the way that the process was described, it makes it sound like we're gonna have to sacrifice ourselves. Also, holy cow, flash warning. <clears throat> oh, hello there. What the hell is that? Oh boy. Push your arm into the heart. Wait, have we been poisoning every one of these we've come across? Is this gonna be like the the ultimate fist bump? It totally is. Oh my goodness. Alright, I guess we can do that. Are we gonna get our arm back? Oh, that's like an What the heck? Yikes. I knew it, we wouldn't get our arm back. I knew it, we wouldn't get our arm back. Oh, that's so grotesque. Please, I did what you wanted. Get good, Simon. What? You can't leave. The only way to make sure the WoW stays dead is to destroy the only one who's immune to the new pattern. Don't worry. Oh no. <clears throat> so that individual clearly uh didn't have the best outcome. What is going on right now? So first of all, whoever that was was going to kill us because somehow we're immune to this new pattern, I believe. I don't really know exactly what that means, meaning Maybe the, the WoW could try to inhabit us, or start something new with us. I don't really know. But either way, we just narrowly escaped death. Also, interestingly enough, I thought that person was just kind of like an apparition that appeared in our mind by some means, but they actually must have had a physical form to have been eaten by whatever that was. Right? So that's a surprise. Ah, oh, crap. Um... I, I don't like the look of that. We're going to run as fast as we can. This is some sort of, like, wow worm monster. But, yeah, it um, definitely gives off the impression, again, that we are somehow the WoW's only means of survival through whatever we just did to him. Did to it? Oh, my. And, as a result, we were about to be killed so that we could, oops, not uh, give the WoW any chance of survival, but clearly we failed at that. I can't see anything right now. It just got ravaged. Where am I? I don't even know. I can barely move. But we're gonna do a little fist bump. I wonder if we've been poisoning these things along the way. Okay. Ah, crap. It's bias. We're gonna run! Okay. I was just pretty disoriented, so I don't- I didn't really know where I was supposed to go. And I think I narrowly identified the... the little area we were supposed to hide, but... Where are we? Where am I supposed to go? Is that where we came from? That's probably where we came from. I have no idea, guys. I guess I'll head this way. Is it possible for me to, like, hide under here? Alright, so I'll just chill for a moment. My first question is... Okay, it looked initially like it was the worm thing that was attacking us, but now it just seems like the sort of generic fish that we've been seeing up until this point. I'll head towards whatever that is. 
Uh-oh. It must be pretty close. So I think I'm going to try and hide behind this. Which is proving mildly effective. <laughs> Very much mildly. Is it continuing to circle around me? Doesn't seem so. Okay. Seems it came back for another lap. So we can hide in here for now. Can I, uh... That does look like the worm thing. It It's not just the same as the big fish that we had seen swimming after us in earlier segments, I don't think. Alright, it's like totally locked onto us. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make a little bit of a run for it. And hopefully make it as far as we can. Before we need to hide a little bit. You cannot hide here. Oh boy, it was very close to us. Hide, 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 hide. Look at that thing. <clears throat> what a monster. But yeah, I don't, I don't know where we got transported when we were caught initially, so I don't know if we're going in the right direction even. Those of you who do know are probably like, <clears throat> oh my god, he's going all the way back. We're losing so much progress. But I really don't know, so. It goes off into the darkness and is going to turn around. And it's coming back, so we'll... Oh boy. Let's hope it keeps going on in that direction. In the meantime, we'll just kind of cruise. Ah, shoot. It's getting close again. Can we go behind here? No, we can't. We can. Let's hope that it hides me. Well enough. <laughs> this is not the, the best hiding spot, but it might get the job done. And we're getting close to that dome thing, whatever it is. It definitely looks different from the place we came out of when we initially escaped, so I think we're moving in the right direction. Just waiting for it to leave me alone. Can't really see where it is. There we go. Alright, now it should head off. So let's get moving. Gotta move eventually. Oh man, it's already getting close to me again. Alright, we're just gonna run for those rocks. Can I hide in here? This would be a solid hiding spot. Nice. What is that over there? I'm too curious. I don't even know. Do, do we, like, make it through Site Alpha? Are we closer to, to Fi or whatever now? Or are we just going back to Tau? I don't know. That looks like the... I don't know, like it's ascending, right? So I think we're actually going back to Tau. Hopefully that's not the wrong way. Is it coming back this way? I don't know where it's coming from or not. Yeah, I don't know. But right now, I feel like making a run for it. So we're running for it. Hit the switch. Hit the switch. Hit the switch. Push the button. We're almost there. We're almost there. Get in there, Simon. Please. <laughs> or at the very least, let the door block the monster. Alright, alright. I think we kind of made it. Kind of. Yes. Wait, was that the monster that did that, or is that something behind us that did that? Oh no, it looks like we made it to Phi. So hey, progress. Idle. Can I... where do I place this again? Over here. Okay. So we can let this drain. And then we can get moving. Is 
This guy's only got two handles. Unlike those other doors on Tau that I think had like eight of them to unlock. So maybe if there's a chase sequence again, it won't be as ridiculous to try to escape. All good to go. Seems like it. It's loading. So we must have made some sort of progress. Whoa. Visually, something seems off. This has to be five, right? Hope the arc made it. This is really me. interesting. Things look a lot more normal, right? Like visually things seem a little bit weird in general, but like, here's some wow. Okay, I was going to say, there's very little wow that I notice. But yeah, hopefully the arc made it here. But I mean, clearly there was still some semblance of wows impacting here. But nowhere near as intense as, uh, as on Site Alpha. That's still locked. I mean, clearly the game is pushing us in this direction with the open door, the Phi door there. Can we go through here? No? Okay, all right, a little bit of a freeze there. Can we go to the left? <clears throat> That's locked, okay. I'd imagine a lot of this is going to be locked. Here's the loading dock. That's also locked. All right, can we do something with this computer then? Ah, yes, that's our solution. Catherine! It's complicated. I just need to know one thing. I'll have both my arms in the arc, right? Yes, of course. Are you okay, though? Can you do stuff? Yeah. Let's just get this over with. Did you find the arc? I did, but I kind of lost it on my way here on an automated tram thing headed to Phi. So it should be around somewhere. That's great. Let's go get it. Wow. The most well-lit place in the entire game. Yeah, I'm so curious as to why Phi is in such great shape. Alright, so I guess we can go take a look and try to hunt down Phi. Did you find out what happened to the Ark team? Not really. For some reason, they didn't go through with the launch, so they took the Ark back to Tau. I hope everything's okay with the space gun. Yeah, I doubt I'll be able to repair one of those. <laughs> with Catherine's help, though, anything is possible. So I want to go see what's going on in these other areas first. This is the service area. Is everything kind of fuzzy from the damage I took earlier? Probably. What's going on here? This feels like it is. Has it just been one day? I have no idea. Our time together is a confusing <laughs> time of moments to me. What time is it now? What day? It's May 11th, 2104, 3.30 a.m., but I don't remember when we started. This is a bathroom? Ah, yes. Let's clear up the, the fuzziness. Refresh. There we go, things look a little bit more crisp. You know, I woke up in my bed today. It just happens to have happened a hundred years ago. Sounds like a riddle. It does. I woke up in my bed today, a hundred years ago. <laughs> Who am I? Who am Oof. I? Getting real deep there. Also, is it just me or... We're Simon, right? Like... Did, did Catherine call us Chris? crazy to think where I am. Not only is this the future, it's in the middle of the sea. I know nothing of this time or what the world looks like. Not much to brag about now. Before the comet, I guess it was okay. Yeah. Better not oversell it. Might change my mind about the Ark. You sure is he not going to tell me what happened to your arm? I had to make a quick stop at Site Alpha to help kill the WoW. What? How? Why? Stop it from torturing the memory of humanity. Okay, <laughs> just get back to work. What will you do when you get into the Ark? 
What's the first thing? Make sure the arc is safe, stabilize flight path, activate solar panels. Well, what's the first <laughs> human thing you're gonna do? Oh. Watch the clouds roll by? Does that count? I'd say so. So, we see the launch dome over here. Why is that light blinking in storage? Maybe that's where the arc is. If so, okay, I've got a decent idea of how to get to where we need to go. Although, before I do that, I want to take a look at this other stuff. OSG over. A satellite is loaded into a shell. The shell is accelerated by electromagnets along the barrel. Enough momentum to escape Earth's gravity is gained before progression. This is so great. Reaching space, the satellite will shed the shell and unfold. Onboard thrusters settle the satellite into an orbit. Okay. Tunnel transport. Tunnel transport TT1, Phi cargo bay, contents arc. Status requires manual offload. So that's what's flashing there. Got it. Staff activity. Um, incoming. We have ENT or entry. Herber, Peterson, Linwall, Chun, Ivashkin, Hill. Outgoing. Interesting. So Herber came in a year afterwards, right? Oh, that's us <laughs> today, right? Um, but it shows that on the 27th of the year 2103, Peterson, Linwall, Chun, Ivashkin, and Hill all came in, and everybody but Catherine came out. Huh. They tried launching the Ark, right? Tw on the 27th, it says their activity was launching the Ark. But it looks like a little over a month before that, they said one last visit. Huh. How interesting. So let's go to the loading room. This is what's going to transport us to the other side of the building. And from there, we should be able to get to... Oh yeah, it's probably a little more difficult to climb now. But yeah, from here... Oh, they did say tunnel system, right? Tunnel transport? Yeah. So, here we are, loading platform, what's all this stuff over here? I thought this was the storage, or maybe, maybe not, I don't know. There are a couple of these around, but we haven't encountered an enemy yet, which, as always, makes me a little bit nervous. What is this? Do I have to, like, unplug this, or... I don't know. Why is there blood on this? I don't like that. Does it need a battery? Ah, that's what it is. It needs a battery. What do we got here? Nothing too useful, I guess. And it just looks like the WoW has extended to, to supply the battery source. But it's not enough, I guess, to open the door, actually. Alright. So it seems that those are the main things going on here. What is this? Here's a battery pack I need. The real question is, when I take this out, what's it gonna... I knew it. It would take out the main lighting. <laughs> so naturally it gets that much darker. Alright, we'll place the battery pack over here. And that should allow us to open this door. I think this is the storage closet that has the Ark. There it is. Our precious Ark. Alright, found the Ark. Good job, Simon. Now we just need to find the assembly space so we can stuff the Ark into the The assembly shop. space? I do not remember much about an assembly space. Here? No, I guess not. Here? I guess not. <laughs> it's probably over here. This is what, the loading zone? Or the loading dock? Yikes. Are you suggesting we keep it down here? 
Doesn't that defeat the whole purpose? Eternity among the stars, remember? The people inside the Ark won't know the difference. We can just keep it down here, and we don't have to risk the Ark being shot through 5,000 meters of broken barrel, and then push through another 100,000 meters of a dust-filled atmosphere. Will the casing stand all that pressure? Well, the odds aren't great. Catherine, say something. I don't care what you think. I'm launching it. No need to be like that. Let's just hang on to it for a while and think about it. We can launch it later. No, that wasn't the deal. We needed to save them, to launch it. Out there, it's hope. Down here, it's a fucking terrarium waiting to die with the rest of us. Come on, Catherine. It's not asking much. Let's just think about it before we risk the only hope humanity has to survive this hell. No, we launch it today. This is my project, my arc. It's bigger than that. Don't you get it? It's not for you to decide. We're talking about the fate of mankind. Get away from the ark. I'm taking it. No, you're not. I'm not gonna let you ruin this. Yikes. Stop it! Guys, calm down! Get away from me! No! Oh. What the fuck did you do? It was an accident. Catherine, talk to me. Catherine... Oh, God. Catherine. Did you say something? It's you. You had an accident. What are you... Oh. You mean Catherine. Don't worry, it's better this way. Wait a minute, so what exactly was the accident? Is this Catherine right here? It doesn't seem like it because at the end of that memory they were like, wait, Catherine, what did you do? And it was like, oh god, did Catherine accidentally kill one of the people? But at the same time we saw the outgoing activity. How did she die? You got into a fight with your colleagues. They didn't want to risk launching the Ark, thought it might not make it through the atmosphere. They killed me? I'm sure it was an accident. They were just trying to stop you from- Holy cow, they killed Catherine! They killed Catherine! With a wrench! A bloody wrench! Oh my god. How could they kill me? Catherine. I know I'm not an easy person to like. I just thought they trusted me. Come on, don't do this to yourself. Yikes. What a sucky realization that you worked on this project and got all the way to the point of launching the Ark and then everybody you worked on this with killed you. I think I'm on the assembly space. What do you see? It's like a huge open shell, a bullet ready to be loaded. That's great. All prepared for the Ark. On it. All right. Did you have friends in Toronto, Simon? Real friends? There was some. Jesse, Sean, Kevin. I always wanted a friend. Like a real one. Someone you'd never hold back with. I'll be your friend. Aww. Uh, pity friendship? Now I feel even worse. I would argue that Catherine and Simon at this point are genuine friends. Do you think the Ark will make it through the atmosphere and into space? It almost doesn't matter anymore. We just need to try. If we burn, we burn. If we're lucky... We just gave humanity a new chance, a whole new era. With the Ark on Earth, maybe we have a few decades of power to keep it running. In space, we have thousands of years. Still, one hell of a gamble, though. This was never about certainty. It's about hope. Interesting. That's a very interesting ethical, or just a philosophical dilemma, right? Some degree of certainty in trade for a much bigger reward with a lower probability of success. And then saying, you know, it's not even necessary about that, but the, the hope, right? I've always, I always joke that um, buying a lottery ticket, for example, is a decision that literally never makes sense. From a mathematical standpoint, the likelihood of you winning the lottery and the even with the degree of money you could potentially make from it, the expected value is just so abysmally low it literally never makes sense to buy a lottery ticket yet it's clearly a very profitable business and when i've brought this up before my dad has mentioned that there's more to gain from a lottery ticket than the probability of winning money uh, sometimes people just do it for hope uh, because they're trapped in a particular situation they feel crappy about the life they've been given their financial situation etc and they buy a ticket just to give themselves a chance of 
having something completely different, of being able to hope for something better. And um, that was a perspective I never thought of before. And honestly, I still don't like it. I think if you want to give yourself a chance at a hope um, for some sort of improvement, you would do something different with that money than buy a lottery ticket. Uh, that would actually have a more concrete, a much higher probability of having a greater impact on your situation, like saving that money, um, investing in something, you know? I'm really not that familiar with guns of any size. Oh, here we go. All systems say go. Lock and load. Come back up and we'll head out to the gun. But it was just interesting to think that, that the value of that hope that offers um, could vary quite a bit from person to person. But anyways, now we head on up, I believe, which is this way. The Ark is loaded. I can't imagine Phi is going to run this well, right? Like, we haven't encountered any enemies. It's been, it's been very well lit, bright, and we haven't run into many obstacles. I can't imagine Phi just running this smoothly. Now what? Now we just need to get the shell onto the gun, and then, kaboom. Aren't you forgetting something? How are you going to get us on board the Ark? Don't we need to make another scan? Oh, don't you worry. You don't operate something like the Omega Space Gun with your bare hands. You mean, it's a pilot seat? Like back at Omicron? Yes, and we can use it to transfer you to the Ark while operating the gun. Two birds and all that. Now, take the Omni tool and plug it in next to the seat, and I'll guide you through the final steps. So here's something interesting. She didn't mention putting herself on the Ark. She only mentioned that it would be getting, you know, killing two birds with one stone to get Simon on the Ark in the pilot seat. Right? That has me concerned. All right. Here we go. Heading into the, the launch dome, right? Why is it filling with water, though? Do we have to go outside to get to it? I guess so. <laughs> Definitely seems that way. Can I go? Almost. Now I can go. Game's giving me a little bit of feedback with that loading screen that I'm moving in the right direction. There it is. There's the, the gun. We'll head there in just a moment. What is this? Do not operate machinery without safeguards. Danger restricted area. So we can place the Omni tool there. That must be the pilot seat. There's the space gun. Wow, this is this is crazy, guys. Oh, I'll never get used to that. Guess you won't have to. Not after this is over. Right. Have a seat. Okay. Look at just look at how impressive that thing is. I mean, we saw how. Expansive it is. It extends, you know, plenty of, uh, you know, thousands of meters from the bottom of the ocean. But. Comfortable? As good as it's gonna get. Okay, I'll activate the seat. You should be able to use the machines to load the. Do you have a righty version <laughs> that'll allow me to use my right hand to control it? How do you operate this thing? Don't know. I never tried this one. But pilot seats are notoriously easy to use. Oh, so great. Thanks for setting the bar low so I can, uh,. You know. Whoa. So. Okay. Let's see. How do I move things? If I hit R2, that's what happens. Huh. Oh, I think it's following my cursor. Mm. 
Interesting. Nope, a little bit too far. This is very interesting. I think that should work. No. No. Alright, so let, let's see how far I can drop this thing just in general. Okay, so that's as far as it'll go regardless. I don't remember exactly what I'm supposed to be trying to do regardless. We got some good feedback there, right? What was that for? Oh! <laughs> I see, so we're supposed to use this, I believe, to grab this, and then we load it. I thought we were trying to drop this into the... <laughs> okay. Appreciate you guys' patience with that one. <laughs> Notoriously easy to use. Struggles to realize I need to pick up the... the arc in the first place. Love it. Just hit the button and we're off. But we need to transfer our minds to the Ark. We also need to make sure it launches at all, so I tied them to a single switch. She's totally lying. She's off. totally lying. I love it. We just... Can we just, like, comment on the fact that Catherine is so invested in this in this project? And in that last instance we had, what right? What are you waiting for? Just bracing myself. <laughs> We saw how intense and how intense she was on actually sending off the Ark. It actually got her killed. Um, and she's talked about how, you know, the pilot seat, it's like kind of... You okay? Yeah. It's just crazy thinking about what we're doing. Ditching Earth. Buckles your mind. But anyways, how the pilot seat is a combined thing. It'll bring Simon on board, but not necessarily... But hasn't promised that it'll bring Catherine on board. But the idea is like, I think, I think Catherine is tricking us. It doesn't change my course of action, but Deep breaths, Catherine. Soon we'll be among the stars. let's hope so. Let's hope What's so. interesting, though, too, is Simon won't be, right? Because Simon's not on that arc, I don't think. Here we go. No turning back. Thank you, Simon. Don't mention it. It's an amazing thing you did. And I want you to know I appreciate it. Oh, so we are actually getting scanned. And it looks like it's both Catherine Time. and Simon. Twenty seconds. What's the matter with the upload? Just give it a second. How'd you guys get a better bandwidth? Oh boy. Initiating capture. You better hurry up. It got Catherine, but it might not get Simon. Ten seconds. Oh Nine. my goodness. Eight. Seven. Six. essentially have split consciousnesses, right? We're here. No. We were getting on the Ark. I saw it. It finished loading just before it launched. Yeah, I saw. Then why are we still here? Simon, I can't keep telling you how it works. You won't listen. You know why we're here. You were copied onto the Ark. You just didn't carry over. You lost the coin toss. We both did. Just like Simon and Omar Khan. Just like the man who died in Toronto a hundred years ago. No. This is bullshit. We came all this way. We launched the Ark. I know it sucks, but our copies are up there. Catherine and Simon are both safe on the Ark. Be happy for them. Are you crazy? We're gonna die down here with those fuckers living at large on a spaceship. They're not us. Are they? They're not us. I'm sorry you feel that way, Simon. I'm proud of what we did. We made sure that something of the hundreds of thousands of years of human history survives, that something lives on. No, 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 no. Fuck this! Fuck you! 
Fuck this! Fuck you! Fuck you, Catherine! You lied! And I believed in you! I trusted you! You said we're getting on the fucking Ark! We are on the Ark, you idiot! I didn't lie! I can't be responsible for your goddamn ignorance! Yikes. So this is a pretty grim end result. Catherine? And some lovely final way. last words. Catherine? Catherine? Wow. Holy cow. And that's the ending. Oh my god, how depressing. So yeah, in the very end, Simon gets uploaded to the Ark, but of course, it was a copy. So with regards to his you know continuity of consciousness like Catherine said it was a coin flip and and he lost and there's something to be said about you know sending there are essentially now two simons right S you know sending one on onto the ark but he lost the coin flip that the consciousness that he'd been experiencing up until this point did not end up on the ark is is incredibly sad incredibly depressing same with the Catherine obviously and now it looks like everything is shutting down at Phi. With the launch of the Ark, there's a critical failure, electricity, whatever it may be. Catherine, who was in the Omni tool, right, clearly can't function without any sort of port to, to talk through, etc., right? Simon is alive, but. but he's alone. How sad. Really, how sad. And what's so great about this ending is you feel so immensely sad amidst your accomplishment. You really did do something great, as Catherine pointed out, for all the different reasons why, right? We really did accomplish something incredible for all of humanity with that last moment, yet we feel so sad. Not even really because there was a sacrifice, but because we lost a coin flip. We feel bad for Simon and Catherine, and that juxtaposition is, is a really neat feeling. But, wow, um, what else is there to say about that ending? I think something cool, and maybe, maybe it's intentional or not, but we don't really get any confirmation that the Ark makes it, right? We know that we launch it, and that's the best we have. We don't know, and we never will know, if the Ark actually made it to outer space. We'll never know if anything is done with the thousands of years of, you know, humans living on in the Ark and they're eventually brought back or uploaded to something, whatever it may be. We really don't know. And that's part of, I don't know, the, the coin flip nature, the uncertainty and the hope driven theme of, of this game, right? The story of the dismal situation humanity found itself in and the aspiration to do something, to have some sort of thing that lives on beyond your finite existence that's that's pretty cool and those were really short credits i'm used to like minutes long credits oh what is this hello we're in a pilot seat whoa is this... did it work? Where the heck are we? It's a pilot seat. It's clearly that pilot seat. What consciousness are we? Why do we have our arm? Did Simon try to come up with something that worked? Is this the hope? Is this the reward we get? Why was there just a body in this pilot seat here? Do we make it to the surface amongst the dismal Earth's surface and try to keep ourselves alive for the future of, I don't know, potentially being sent back to our body? It looks like there's greenery. Is this actually Earth or is this the Ark? That's another thing to consider, right? The fact that we don't know is priceless too because that's partially the point, right? This must be the other Simon's perspective. That would be my best guess. Holy cow, this is beautiful. And then, oh my goodness, are we going to meet up with Catherine? How incredible would that be? If we see Catherine in person? For the first time? 
having made it onto the Ark. It's really cool that they include this after the credits, too. They let that feeling of despair, conflictedness sink in. Yep, here we go. Calibration survey V0.3. Welcome. If you're reading this, you have successfully entered the Ark. This survey is designed to give the developers a better understanding of your subjective experience, how to improve your well-being. Please continue with the survey. How would you describe your physical condition? I feel invigorated. Or I feel normal. Yeah, is this... No, I mean, it feels like how I felt throughout the game, right? I feel... I feel normal. How would you describe your mental condition? I feel... Disconnected. How would you describe your senses? I feel more sensitive to and aware of my surroundings? I don't know how to answer these. Am I answering from the perspective of this Simon or me as the player? I don't I don't know. I don't know if these even have an impact on the ending or whatever it is, but how would you describe the sensation of your new condition? I think me as a person, this is interesting, I almost kind of want to go back, but how I personally would feel in this situation would be depressed, actually. Are you troubled by the fact that you are no longer strictly human? Somewhat. How do you perceive your new existence? Um, it's not a direct continuation. In my opinion. Do you think this new existence will be a life worth living? I think... I would say this. Maybe we can find a new sense of meaning in this world. Just the, the circumstances of existence have changed so drastically that I can't even use the same standards from the previous life. Even that me saying previous life tells you how I'm considering this life in comparison to the old one. Whereas some people may might not even make that distinction, right? But anyways, there's just a different standard to compare and, and you know, what does meaning mean when you have a physical body versus not, right? Would you rather be removed from the project and accept death? This, oh my goodness, I would still say no. But in, I wonder, I bet if you say yes, uh-oh, you would be taken out. Okay. Well, anyways, that confirms that this is the Ark. They did an excellent job describing, or, you know, making it beautiful. We'll continue on our trail. Let's see if we can get a closer look at the water. And we probably, we probably will soon enough when we get to the edge of this formation. Where are the other people? I knew we'd see Catherine. Catherine. I can't believe we actually made it. Did we? We did. I'm so relieved. It's okay, Simon. Everything's all right now. <laughs> I, I spoke too soon. So we do get confirmation that the satellite's out there. The Ark made it. Also, holy cow, look at Earth. Just look at Earth right now. That is apocalyptic. Also, I, I wish we got to see Catherine more and see their interaction. But this is, this is the duality of their existence right now. That, in one semblance, Catherine and Simon did make it onto the Ark, are living in paradise together for the first time, Whereas the other Simon is alone. That Catherine arguably doesn't exist anymore. And Simon's just waiting for his own death. Alone. And now this is a side of the ending that's not even just hope, but confirmed reward. 
for all of the effort we put into, you know, getting all of humanity, the Ark, etc., out into outer space. Wow. And then the continued hope that it proves to be useful sometime in the future, right? Are the credits going to continue now? The end. Oh, and then the, the face there is Catherine. Interesting. So we can't even, oh, we can't even choose to continue. Interesting. If I choose load game, oh. So there are all the different saves that I can choose to go back through. Huh. Okay. Well, I guess I'd, I'll talk about the game. Normally I'll do this during the credits for what it's worth. Um, I'll talk about what I, my thoughts were on the game and everything. Um, I, I'm going to start by saying thank you guys so much for all of your support throughout this series and for watching. This has been a very fun playthrough. Uh, if you aren't interested in hearing my thoughts on the gameplay, etc., and are just going to be, you know, signing off at this point. Uh, thanks again. I hope I can see you guys in future uh, playthroughs. But overall, Soma is a good game. I, I liked it a lot. It is horrific in that it has environments that definitely keep you on edge. Um, they have monsters that are very horrific, both in design and, and in AI. Uh, again, keeping you on edge, never really knowing if you're 100% safe. The limited visibility, the darkness, the atmospheres... Uh, keep you guessing as to what's going on while at the same time the story goals force you to eventually have to take leaps of courage into the darkness and try to manage as you encounter problems on the go right so so I think they did a really good job with the horror aspect of it on the other hand and well actually to, to my liking there were pretty significant segments of the game that didn't involve monsters I think some people might dislike that. I actually enjoyed it in this game that there were times where I was given the freedom and the flexibility to explore the different space stations, the environments, really take in the design of the monsters, the wow, etc. And, and not have to hide. Hide and seek gameplay is something that can be very hit or miss in horror games. And I think it can get a bit old when you're forced to hide disproportionately. And maybe that's player-based, maybe that's, you know, game design-ish. Um, but I, I do feel like hide-and-seek gameplay gets on my nerves after a little bit. And you guys probably saw that as well in some of the chase sequences where I felt like I had to hide frequently. Or when I was hiding, I had to hide for a very long time before I could try to take another action. And it, it felt like it be, hindered my gameplay a little bit. So I will say the gameplay segments where I did have to hide were maybe not optimal but they weren't bad and like i said they weren't super frequent which is something i liked as well but it's not like when you didn't have a monster to run from things weren't creepy or keep you on edge right you didn't know when there was going to be a monster even if they were relatively infrequent so you always had to stay alert the story is really cool i really like the idea of the post-apocalyptic world and it's really creative, the idea of having somebody sort of wake up a hundred years later without any idea of what's going on, kind of scrambling to find resources that guide him, that can potentially guide him along to figuring out who he is, what, where he is, what's going on, what time it is, why he was brought back now, etc., and progressively learning those things. The whole idea of, you know, launching an arc with the digital versions of ourselves is probably relatively recent, you know, sci-fi sort of things, right? Like, that's arguably in the realm of reason on, you know, the scope of hundreds of years. So it's interesting to ponder that possibility. And then, of course, the whole idea of just, like, the world coming to a close. We talk about climate disaster and all the pot potentially negative impacts we're having on Earth, and so it's worth asking what would happen if Earth became in uninhabitable, right? And, and then, of course, 
the big point of this game is the the meta questions, right? The themes, the deep philosophical questions about what makes somebody human, right? What makes a person a person? Is it the physical human body they have? Is it the way they think? Is it their memories? Is it the continuity of their memories? Do two people that have the same exact memories but exist in two physical bodies at the same time, whether one body is human or one is robotic, is one of those more of a person than the other? Is any one of those less genuine of that person uh, than the other? Those are really deep questions that Soma you know, touches on or really not touches on, but directly addresses in this game without offering answers, but so much as imploring the, the player to just think about it, right? Um, at what point does a human become a machine? Is it when, you know, certain, I think it's like, the idea is like, well, if you have some machine parts to your human body, do you become a machine? Is it when all of your human body is replaced by a machine? Is it when some of your pro, you know, thought processes are machine, whereas some are human? Is it the based on the environment you live in, right? Um, arguably, none of the people in the Ark are people because none of them even have physical corporeal bodies, machine or you know, human, right? So that's something really interesting to think about. And then similarly, you can approach from the other end of what makes a machine human? Because we think about people in terms of starting as people and then progressively becoming less human as they lose characteristic traits we associate with humanity. But at the same time, when initially you see so many of these machines, like I remember in the very first few episodes, there was that robot Carl that I was so strictly, I don't know, tied to the idea that it was a machine trying to be human, right? And really just kind of anchored in the appearance of the machine, even though now I know that was actually a person that was essentially implanted into that machine. Um, but you can approach the idea from the other end. At what point does a machine become human as it adapts more, more human, I guess, like human-like characteristics, right? And then, of course, as we talked about earlier with the idea of hope um, and, and what that can offer to, to people. What, even if it's not a very concrete value, right? So from like a, a philosophical standpoint, I really like how deep this game was and I like how it explored those different topics and really, again, didn't, didn't really offer direct answers, but just push the, the player to think about it really deeply and in different situations. Is the person who's living on, you know, 500 different life support machines tethered to WoW human? And if they are human, are they living life? <laughs> At what point is a life not worth living, right? Those are other questions that the game touches on. And so I, I've talked about them, you know, when we encounter those different things. But I, I, again, like how this game explored those themes. And I will say, if you like those themes... Some other thing, some other, one other game that I recently played that also explored it really well was Near Automata, so I would recommend that too. Other things, art, I really like the design of the monsters, the, the wow and what it did to the environment was really cool. I like how they designed the humans as well, I like the environments, um, some of them got to be kind of samey, but overall they were, they were still really good. I like what they did with the abyss. I really liked the, the drawn documents and how detailed they were, um, especially with like the family member, like all the different employees and pictures from their family members and drawings. Uh, and then also drawings of like the different creatures we encountered in the sea. Those were really neat too. I really liked that. Um, I, I remember I really liked the pictures of WoW like taking over the fish and stuff and the progressive evolution of that process. That was really neat. So yeah, the, the art was really cool in this game. Uh, the sound design was excellent. Very mellow, always kind of a lull or like an underlying baseline of, of horrific, just kind of edge creepiness, right? So the sound design was was pretty solid. From a gameplay standpoint, I already talked about the hide-and-seek aspects. One thing I didn't like is that there were so many interactable objects that didn't matter at all, <laughs> right? Like, uh, like every bit of debris, every locker, there was very little to actually find in those. And so I would have liked streamlining the interactable objects, whether that's simply 
decreasing the ability to interact with meaningless objects, and then simultaneously slightly increasing the visual cues for the interactable objects, like a little bit of a light or um, something like that. That'll naturally draw the player to interact with the objects that actually have something meaningful in them. Otherwise, I don't really have too many gameplay complaints. Oh, the fuzziness. When you get damaged and everything is all blurry, yes, you can heal yourself with those things, but, but the fact that your visual experience is sometimes for a very long time altered by having that damage uh, was detrimental at times. Not because it was like a big challenge and it was too hard to play the game at that point because of it. It was just because I couldn't enjoy what I was enjoying about the game, the atmosphere, right? So I think if that just regenerated over time, like after, I don't know, one minute or two minutes of being damaged, that would eventually go away. Even if it doesn't mean your health goes back to normal, just again, so you can enjoy the environment that the developers clearly spend a lot of time, you know, um, curating to to instill fear um, while still promoting exploration. But yeah, overall, I really enjoyed the game. It was really neat. Big thanks to Beth for pushing me to play the game, and congrats again on <laughs> winning or getting it third in, in Hero Verse Zero Season Five Mega Man Zero Challenge. And I hope you guys enjoyed this one just as much as I did. Thank you so much for your support, as I said earlier. You guys commenting throughout the whole series makes the entire gameplay experience that much more enjoyable. So, so thank you for that. And if you guys like this game, there are plenty of other horror games on the channel. I highly encourage you to check out Silent Hill. Check out Fatal Frame if you haven't been already to check out Corpse Party. There are a few different variations, different types of horror to, you know, whatever fits your fancy. But otherwise, until the next playthrough of whatever it is on my channel that you guys decide to go to, this has been Night Zero, and this mission is complete.